good morning. Now I've had someone ask for a particular basher setup, so I'm going to film that today, although I'm not hanging about. It's only just above freezing and they've forecast a bit of sleet and possibly snow later. So I'm going to get this done and get back home. I've not travelled far, I'm right on the very edge of the town in the most convenient piece of woodland. So you might hear a bit of traffic noise and bits and pieces in the background, but it's the best I could do today. Okay, let's do it. Right, well I'm in the, in the holly over this side, which is far from ideal for filming, but I'm just going to stick a quick loop on this side, just to uh, make life easy. I'm not sure, I might have to adjust the height of this, because the bit of ground I'm using has got a raise in the middle. So I'm not sure how, how high the ridge line will actually be in the centre. Let's get to the other tree. Right, I'm going to go with a simple trucker's hitch this end. I want a bit of tension on here because it's actually quite a long span between these two trees. I could, could have picked a better location, but okay, what? So let's go back about 18 inches. I don't know whether I'm still in shot or not at that point. But just like a loop in the line. I don't know if I see that. Nothing fancy, literally just wrapped around my fingers and drawn through. Simple loop. I think that'll be about the right height. I say the ground's uneven here, so it's a job to tell. Stick a bit of pre-tension on. Through the loop. Now we can wind some force on. That's tight now. Very clever how doing hitches like that work. Gives you like a two to one mechanical advantage. Like using a, a pulley, really. Right. Let's tidy that up. Stick that up there out of the way. There's a line up. Let me grab the camera. Give him a twist. Hang on, let's see if we get a bit more focus. So I'll just a uh, simple loop put in there, round the tree, run the end through the loop, pulled it tight, wrapped it round, just, just knotted it off. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. So I've got a, a roughly straight line, allowing for the Hump in the ground here, and we are. Let's have a look. Quick measure about chest high. About chest high, I've gone there. That should work okay. We'll find out when I throw the tarp over it. Right, I've just thrown the batter over. At the moment, as you know, they're not square, and I've got it like the seven foot way that way and the eight foot, front to back, top to bottom, however you like to think about it. It will give you a bit of a deeper shelter, and let's face it, seven foot is enough to sleep behind anyway, unless you're massive. But uh, yeah, no reason why you can't do it the other way around. Um, but doing it eight foot that way, and the shorter vertical, you'll get a much steeper back to the side you'll get longer coverage, but more upright. So, pros and cons, just depends what you fancy. Right, I'm just gonna stick a couple of prussic knots on there to hold in tight. Nothing fancy here, it's actually a old pair of boot laces. So I'll just stick that on. Right, I'm sure you've all seen this before anyway, but I'll, I'll film it just in case. 
Just made a loop, nothing fancy. Just half the line basically. Tails through the loop. Tails through the loop again. You can go three times if you want, but uh, I normally find twice is more than enough. Just tidy that up. Crossing loop or monkey fist, depending on who showed you and told you. And all I'm going to do is through this grommet here. Stick one of them raggedy tails through there. And I'm just going to tie that in a bow. It's like doing your shoes up. Nothing fancy. I don't do fancy. There, that's that nice and tight. And when I've done the other end, of course, I can slide to tension, which I'll do in a second. Right, let's grab hold of the prosthetic knot. Put him in the middle that way. Yeah, that's got him nice and tight. And stick a couple of pegs in the back. Going through the grommets, can go through the webbing, doesn't really make any difference. Works best when you do this if you can get a bit of diagonal tension or go against the opposite corner. If I was staying for the night, I would peg out that middle one as well. Just look for this show and tell. That'll do. Right, get around the front and do a porch. I'm just going with the, with the bungees for a bit of speed. But there's no reason why you can't use proper guy lines. It does make it a little bit more adjustable. And speaking of adjustments, we'll have a look at something in a minute. Well, that's your, your side-on shot of it completed. Uh, so we're seven foot along the back. Plenty to sleep under. Got the eight foot running that way, which of course gives me a big porch. I've set this down at quite an angle because this is, uh, should we say a UK setup? Because nine times out of 10, you're expecting rain. What you can do if the weather is better is on this corner cut a couple of sticks uh, not quite ridgeline height because you, you want a bit of slope in case it rains which we say about so high and prop this side up you can see the advantage of the bungee there <laughs> easy without adjusting but yeah you can put a couple of sticks in the front lift it up so this is flatter You've got more view out the front, better weather, and of course when it's not windy. Uh, the other thing, if you want more view out the front, I'm limited the length of this overhang because of the grommet, where I've had to tie on the prosic knot. If you put the basher the other way round, uh, so we're much longer, but only seven foot that way over, the grommets on this edge are much closer together. That is what, 18 inches, something like that. It's about, about that much, the first grommet from the corner. So if you spin the basher the other way round, 
tie on at the first grommet with your prosic knot, you'll only have about that much overhang. So you've still got shelter, but of course you can now see out much further because you haven't got as much here. It's personal preference. It comes down to the weather, where you are. I know the guy that asked the question about this setup is in Australia. <laughs> so chances are he'd do it the other way around with a, a short overhang. Let's face it, their, their weather's a bit better than ours, especially at the moment. So yeah, I hope that has answered the, you know, the question and given you, you know, more in depth of how I would set this up. It's a good shelter. Um, I know when I was having a discussion with the, the guy that asked about doing this, he mentioned he'd seen someone else do it um, with camo netting as well on the ends here, which is quite a good idea because of course you're nicely covered from the back if you're hiding up, should we say, and not too bad from the front, but you are quite sort of exposed to the side. So to hang some camo netting here, like a veil, it is quite a good idea. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I would attach it at the moment, unless it was a, a couple of long pieces and I could throw it over the ridge line and then pin it down maybe. Don't know, never done it. <laughs> That's the simple answer, I've never done it. But uh, it's a good idea. So yes, I hope that answers your questions. Um, I believe the guy's name was, there's a test for the old head, Mark. So Mark in Australia, I hope that's helped. Thanks for watching, buddy.